Hi everyone, Quantum Anomaly here, coming at you with 10 things that you may not have known that you can do inside of Levelhead's powerful level editing system. There's a ton of things to go over, so we're just going to jump right on into it. Tip number one, if you're tired of having to see the power-up animation at the start of a level that you want Great Teen to have a power-up in, simply return to the editor, select Great Teen with the eyeball icon, and assign the power-up from there. This allows Great Teen to start the level with a specific power-up and keeps you and your player happy. Tip number two. Flying monsters, such as the Swoopadoop and Blopfish, can be placed on paths, and those path switch IDs can be turned off to keep the monsters in place. This is handy for hiding a monster in a secret location, eh, where you can attack them at just the right moment. Be careful though, as Swoopadoops do have an aggro range, and if Great Teen enters their threat range, the Swoopadoop will attack. However, if the path ID is switched off, the Swoopadoop will remain in its location until the path ID is returned to an on state. At which point, if the monster is a certain distance away, it'll either teleport or fly back to its position on its path. Tip number three. While in cheese mode, tapping the cheese mode button again brings up an options menu that allows Great Teen to be assigned a power-up, a curry item, invincibility mode, a number of gems collected, as well as a number of enemies defeated. Just note that once you press start after you've assigned the abilities in this menu, you will be teleported back to the location where you assigned your cheese mode start point. Once there, you can now use these various items and abilities to test just specific portions of your level much more cleanly. Tip number four. Once both gems and brittle rock have been unlocked in the campaign, the default editor shows us that gems can be placed with inside of them. However, much more than just these items can be placed within brittle rock, hard clay, or container blocks. All monsters, most power-ups and collectibles, as well as many carryables can be placed within these items. Once broken, the relevant item will either be instantly collected or placed into the world. Happy trolling. Tip number five. If you're not into trolling your player, consider attaching a camera to a detector switch to reveal to the player the location of dangerous areas, power-ups, or paths that they may not otherwise see or could be just out of their camera range from the default angle. Doing this is a kind way to keep your player challenged without destroying them. Tip number six. When placing certain items that require solid blocks to be above or below them, they will place a default foreground block if no other block is available to attach to. Removing any of these solid blocks will also remove the item in question. To easily rectify this, simply take the type of solid block that you would like to place and paint over the default block. This leaves your door or other item in place and works for all items that require a solid block to be placed beneath them when placing them within the editor. Tip number seven. Items such as bombs, keys, and batteries interact with other physics objects when placed within the world. Once they have been unlocked from their default start location, many objects such as moving paths and bumpers can also interact with them. This can allow for some very creative puzzling and contraption creation use. Tip number eight. The camera location of wherever Great Teen is when you return to the editor from cheese mode is where the cursor will be placed. This can be incredibly useful deter for determining exact jump height and location to ensure that players aren't able to cheese their way to a certain jump. Tip number nine. From within either the cheese or standard playthrough level menus, the settings menu can be accessed. This allows you to do a couple of interesting things, such as turn back on your uh, audio and music to make sure that the music that you've selected matches the level once you're done jamming out to whatever you'd had playing in the background, as well as being able to select editor options, such as turning on the jump height indicator. The jump height indicator will put, place an indicator on the mouse cursor, showing a four tile high jump, which is Great Teen's maximum jump height. Placing tiles within the top and bottom of this bar will allow you to, to easily determine where Great Teen can access within the game. Number 10, items on paths. Quite a few items can be placed on paths, not just fly blocks or flying monsters. To check and see whether an item can be placed or interacts with a path, simply go into the editor, place an item down, and see if the standard lock switch appears. This item must exist on a node of the path and cannot exist in the center of the path, otherwise no lock switch will be shown and the item will not interact. Once the lock icon appears, this item is locked to the path node and will operate via the standard path options. And that's it! 
10 things that you may or may not have known about Levelhead's powerful level creation engine. If these tips or tricks have helped you at all, please feel free to throw a like down below. If you want to see more Levelhead come out of this channel, why not subscribe or leave me a comment? And if you've created a level using any of these creation techniques or want me to check out something that you've published, feel free to comment using your link to the level down below or send me a message in the community Discord at discord.gg slash bscatch. I'm in there pretty often and love to play new player levels. Thanks so much, everybody, and for everyone else out there, keep building!